Hello everyone! So today I'm going to be doing a lesson on car safety. This is still on the playlist of Newton's Laws of Motion and this is actually the last lesson of that playlist. So if you now go on that playlist, it's going to have about five lessons on different stuff related to Newton's Laws of Motion. So first of all, let me just tell you that whenever there is an accident or you need to talk about the effects of a collision, sorry, I just hit the microphone. I think you can hear me well. Uh, normally people uh, express acceleration or the deceleration in terms of G. So for example, if I have a car and it hits a wall with an acceleration of minus 30 meters per second squared, um, we can say that the acceleration is minus 3g. And here I'm approximating, because as you know, g is not really 10, it's 9.81. But um, in current English, people do that. Or just to facilitate, it's just saying, you know, 3. So uh, the impact force that the passenger will feel is going to be 3 mass times g, so ma times the uh, gravitational pull of the Earth, okay? So just this is just so you know how we normally uh, talk in terms of acceleration or deceleration when we talk about impact forces. However, you may hear in the current English that people just say, oh, the impact force was uh, 3G, uh, which not, is actually not quite right, but that's what you hear, okay? So it's just in for your information. Now, what happens? This is the formula that you need to think about when we're talking about car safety. The formula is for impulse, also known as change in momentum, and it says that the change in momentum, meaning the final minus the initial momentum, equals force times the acting time. So the change in momentum, because it's just momentum, one minus the other, still has the units of momentum. So it comes in kilograms, meters per second. The force is a force, comes in newtons or kilograms, meters per second squared. And then the acting time is going to be in seconds, okay? Now, for me to have the same change in momentum, so the same number for impulse, I can have it two ways. I either have a small force in a big time, acting time, uh, as the first picture is showing, or then I can have a small acting time, here we go, and therefore a big force. And this is what we think about car safety. The change of momentum is going to be the same because you are going to have the accident, right? So you have a certain change in momentum. You cannot change it. So the way that you can change the force that you feel is by actually changing the acting time. So this is a constant here. These two are not. But if I can change the acting time in my accident, which is the time for my accident to take uh, place or the time that it takes me to change the momentum, then if I get a big acting time, here we go, then the force on the passenger is small. If I get a small acting time, so if my impact is really fast, the force on the passenger is quite big. So I'm going to have several safety features that are all designed to increase the acting time of my collision, which means to increase the time that it takes me to change the momentum, okay? So, car safety. In a collision, if you have a moving car and it eventually will stop, the final momentum is zero. So that means that the size of the force exerted on the car during the collision depends only on the time that the collision lasts. Because, as I told you, you cannot change, uh, unless you change your speed, you cannot change your impulse. So, so <coughs> we use the formula impulse equals force times the collision time. If I have a bigger contact time or a bigger acting time, actually, you are going to see why I'm changing and write and saying acting time instead, then the force is going to be smaller, okay, for the same change in momentum. So now I just told you, uh, remember that I was saying impact time and acting time and contact time? Now, the thing is, the impact time is the duration of the impact force. So that's the one you put in the equation is different than actually say contact time because sometimes the two cars are tangled together and they remain together so they remain in contact obviously that is not the time that you put into this equation where it says collision time okay because 
obviously that one is not going to tell you about the force on the passengers. The force, the one that affects the force of the passengers is the time that it took for them to change their momentum to go from the initial value to zero, to final momentum of zero. So that's going to be to do with the impact time. The contact time, it can be that way after the uh, accident had happened, the two cars just remain in contact, okay? So what do we do? Well, we can fit the cars with crumple zones and bumpers, and uh, the cars are going to have a rigid box in the middle. Now, the rigid box is so the passenger is protected or as protected as possible, and the crumple zones in the bumpers, they are designed to contract or collapse in a controlled matter, matter. so they mean they know exactly manner, not matter. So they are designed to crumple gradually into a controlled way uh, where they know exactly where each piece of metal is going. And this is to avoid the metal to go into the compartment where the passenger is and into the engine as well, okay? So because they are crumpling and because I have the bumpers, the duration of the collision is going to be longer and therefore the force exerted on the car is going to be smaller. Now, I have two videos here for you. One is about crumple zones, which I will add to the description. The other one is um, a car crash when they are testing a Ford Focus at 120 miles per hour going against the wall. Now, as you can imagine, because the car is going so fast, this is going to be a collision that the acting time is quite short. Therefore, the force on the passenger or on the passengers or the force on exerted on the car is going to be quite large. So I'm also going to put that video on the description because then you see that even with all the safety features, if the acting time is too short, there's nothing you can do. The force is going to be enormous. And that's why we have limits in velocity even though that we have safety features in our cars. We want to guarantee that the passengers are kept as safe as possible. Now, the thing about this last video is that sometimes that link is not working. So I have a second link that I'm going to put in the description. If it doesn't work either, just Google it with the, uh, the title. So the Ford Focus 120 miles per hour car uh, test, which is from the fifth year, okay? So, in summary, this is what I do to maintain my passengers as safe as possible. I have seat belts, airbags, crumple zones, bumpers, and a collapsing steering wheel. All of the above, so all those five, increase the time of the crash. Because the time of the car, uh, car crash is increased, there is a decrease in the rate of change in momentum. So that means that your momentum does not change as fast because the time for you to change it, it has been increased using any or all of those safety features, okay? Therefore, it decreases the force exerted on the driver and on the passengers. And this is because impulse equals force times the acting time, okay? The time of the collision. So that is it. That's all that you need to, do, to know about car safety. Again, check all those videos. If there is a problem with the second one, check uh, with the name of the video. And I hope it all made sense. I think I have more videos coming up still to do with energy and work and movement. But uh, is it going to be in another playlist? So up to then, be happy and healthy. Bye.